Okay, let's see if we are getting any kind of stream. Oh my gosh, Chris Long being the first. Well, that's a first. And a second. Oh my goodness. You're here 10 seconds and you're already trolling the crap out of everything. Good day, Alex and Philip. You guys can fight over it. You can all see on your own screen what is happening here. <laughs> and it took you guys about 30 seconds. That's pretty good going. Hey, Lynn. Philip, 69. Oh my god. Yep, yep. Typical sexually frustrated bunch of nerds. Oh well, I guess that's what I'm used to. Oh yeah. Alrighty. Well, it's um, almost quarter past one in the morning here, and I've just realised I've uh, done some bad fashion here. Blue gloves and blue shirt. Oh well, life is tough. Okay, and I've got here a bag full of iPods, iPod Touch 4th Gen. How many trolls do I have to hop over to get a crown like that? Uh, Alex, you probably have to knock off at least all the trolls in the internet before I'm willing to give a crown out like that. So there you go, that is your task. Uh, I'm just going to see what I've got here that may be usable and what's total trash just the tip, oh my god you guys really are all worked up over something aren't you it's almost like you've been watching that um, James Bond cartoony sort of thing, what's that called? Uh, Archer, that's it as opposed to Arrow which is definitely not James Bond. I'm not even a mod... Well, Chris, that's your own dumb fault, isn't it? If you'd come in on your proper account, you'd have mod status, but no! Jeez, what have I done with half of these? I don't know. I will point out, these have been sitting around for over two years, so it's pretty much guaranteed they're all going to be completely foobarred. And I, to be honest, wanted to kind of practice as well, because I do have a customer one one that someone's left here and they said, can you please fix it for me? And I said, I don't do iPods. And they said, yeah, but can you do it for me? And I was like, oh, for God's sake. So I might try it, since there was nothing else for me to do tonight. In Australia, I found 4S a gold. <laughs> uh, Chris, come on, we're not that backwards. Besides, it's the 3GS that's gold. Yeah, you know, I kind of mock that slightly, but really a lot of people here do still like the 3GS. And I don't blame them, because they do have a nicer hand feel. Ooh, ooh, this one's got a torn battery. Torn speaker. The nice thing about these iPods is going to be that um, almost none of them are going to have cloud lock on them. Because they sort of all went out of phase before the cloud lock really became in phase. So, most likely, if I'm getting to work, then uh, they should all be usable. <sighs> Two years and battery should only be down to nine. <laughs> yeah, I'd say a lot of these are here or were here in part because of battery failure. Okay, what do we got here? This one actually looks somewhat functional. Hmm. I mean, ignoring the fact that the touch cable is hanging out there. We got some 16 gig ones. That's 8 gig. 32 gig. Wow, that that's a winner. 32 gig. Someone paid big bickies for that, and it's sitting here rotting in my workshop. I've got a drawer in my other office, completely full of discarded phones. I've even got uh, a couple of 
Galaxy uh, 6s or S6 or something like that that people have just bought in didn't like the fact that it's going to cost them money to get something fixed or that I wouldn't fix it and they just leave them they, they don't ever come back which as I have mentioned in other streams is a legitimate predicament here because in terms of legalities I'm screwed can't do anything with them anyway. how do you collect so many do customers just leave them indefinitely yep that's what happens Lynn I tell them no nah, can't fix that and a lot of them just sort of go ah oh, alright well yeah, have it it's yours and I'm like okay uh, this one's had water damage and I think the battery there is starting to puff up a little bit the iPod 4th gen was uh, the touch was probably the first uh, iPhone or Apple product that I swore off repairing ever again these things just oh, I think the biggest thing I hated about them was how if the chassis was damaged the little bastards in this hot weather here would just constantly pop out a day or two after you busted your ass to get that screen to sit in there without snapping every two seconds and then you say to the people you say keep it in a case because it's not going to it's not going to stay flat unless you keep it in a case and so little Johnny takes it out of the case and then yeah pops out and mummy's like you didn't fix it right and it's like well I told you so where's the coil? Oh, Chris, that was brutal this morning with Lewis's string. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it must mean something on the circuit board there, but he didn't see it. Of course, I have got money also on the fact that it's prob it could be a um, veer on one of the layers, just sort of creeping out a bit too far or something's gone wrong. But uh, that's a bit of a nightmarish board he's working on. Uh, let's see. I need to get a charger and a 30 pin connector so it won't be two seconds Okay, I'm back. It's okay, Philip. I'm, I'm, I came back. It's all right. I just had to go get some equipment. So my trusty... I'm pretty sure this is a Lenovo brand. Yep. Lenovo USB brick. And this one is just a boring old one amp. But it's a dependable one, so I'm happy. Alright, got my current meter. Chris, I'll probably send those circuit boards in on Monday to get put into production. I made some changes. That's the trouble when I wait. I usually make changes which delays things further. What I'm going to have is uh, two different discharge circuits. One twice as uh, twice the resistance of the other. So you effectively have a three state discharge load. So you can have say one ohm, two ohm, or four ohm. Yeah, anyway. Um, it lets me then, when I'm doing the discharging, test to see if the battery actually can stand up to loads and things like that. Because often you can get away with, say, if you discharge a 500 milliamp, it'll say, I'm fine, I'm fine. And then you go to use it, and it hits a 1 amp demand, and it's like, I give up, I give up, and it just collapses. It's something I found a lot with uh, model aircraft batteries. So I'm using a lot of the model aircraft stuff that I've learned. Uh, with this process and that sucker doesn't charge at all so that's a definite dead <sighs> oh for god's sake chris yeah beg 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 that's all I ever hear from me beg 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 there you go there you, you got your begging mod uh, it's nice being able to curse at people <sighs> i got this town into a bit of an uproar this morning because uh I got sick of the motorcyclists screaming around 
so I posted a shot of my uh, security cameras and geez I tell you what really brought the rednecks out look we pay taxes for the road it's our road we can do whatever we want with it and I said holy crap I'll be glad to move out of this place actually I've forgotten on the iPod screen is that one there the screen or is that the touch I can't remember this is charging so I might just pop in and have a look see what's going there uh, Chris is sort of an exception because he's the special child here so um, yeah that's why you can get away with a little bit of begging It looks like I've sold this in the past and I've done a bit of a shoddy job. I thought someone else sold it. Yeah, let's blame someone else. It has been so long since I've done these that I will confess that I'm not even sure what my process is. G'day, ITC. Okay, yeah. Bobby. The long one is touch. Ah, okay. Alright, so I wasn't getting any screen output on this one. Thanks for that Bobby. I've got Captain Tate on here, Tate on here as well. Seems like this one might have been giving me grief for some reason. Shame, because it's a charging one. I'll give it another shot of plugging it in. Jeez, I must have had thinner fingers back then because how the fuck Sorry, excuse my language, but I'm trying to get that screen connector back on? Who's kidding who? Seriously? I'm surprised I don't have a test cable for this one. I must have used my little pinky finger to get into here to reseed it. All the memories come back and uh, telling me why I don't do iPod touches. <laughs> I2M2. <laughs> oh, no thanks. So, um, as it is, I'm probably going to regret even opening up this bag. This. Yeah, it's like, why did I do this? This is what happens when customers do not keep your. Um, job queue filled up enough. You start pulling stuff out of the archives. Yeah. Rice, rice, bake. Oh no. Chris, I'm starting to get to the point where I don't know if I can trust anything that you say or do. Yeah, I think maybe you like. <sighs> Let's have a look at what you got here. Rice, rice, baby. Russell food t-shirt from BC Connection. Okay, let's have a look at this. <laughs> Russell's food. <laughs> Why is it Rice LS food now? Because oh, rice is food. Sorry, I just realised. A bit stupid there. Rice is food, not friends. Uh, <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, um, I am genuinely thinking that I must have had skinnier fingers back in. The oh wait, no, this is how I do it. Look at that. That's easy. Dead easy. Just boop, and then you slip it over the shoulder and bring it back. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the thing I really hate is after two years or so I completely forgotten how to do these. I know occasionally when I work on an iPhone 4 it will take me 30 seconds or so and I'm like what am I doing? What am I doing? Because I have, you've seen it before, I have my little containers with all the screws, just a little flip lid ones and um, they have a sequence to them you know because 
you know, I have a sequence to doing the 4 and the 4S and it's just a little bit scary at times that I have to stop and think when I'm doing it because I'm like oh yeah it's it's been like three months maybe or maybe even just a month since I last did a 4 and I'm already having to rethink everything Hey Johnny Lation uh, it's okay. I thought you were just um, joining in the troll fest that we're having today. <laughs> see. From what I've read, many iPod screens are refurbished using a full screen. They're hit and miss. Um, perhaps forgetting how to do those is your mind protecting you from the horrors of dealing with <laughs> Yeah, possibly, Greg. <laughs> uh, yeah, Alex, um, when you do live streams and your desk set up and working in... Oh, wait, you mean maybe just like chatting on live streams like this as opposed to generating live streams. Yeah. Uh, Bobby, one of the issues I found was with the earlier... I, I had some screens that wouldn't work with um, early versions of the iOS that was on the iPods so you'd have to get an original Apple screen and then upgrade the iOS and then you could use the refurb... Uh, well they didn't have refurbished actually then you could use the aftermarket screen on it I'm kinda curious where this one comes up because all the screws are missing which is going to be great and it's reminded me also that there's a metal plate there that no one likes to deal with Okay, you're all not coming up See if this one comes up. What do you got? What's your story? You got no charge at all. Hmm. Fun. Chris, can you power these directly off the DC power supply without too much drama? Hey, Pianov. Hey, Mako. Ah, Alex, you'll probably get your trifocal before I do, or simulfocal. I was really hoping for it, me to be able to get that this month, but yeah. And then... I need some hot air here to get this bonding tape off. And I thought, oh well, I'll save up a bit, maybe I can push some bills around and get things a bit earlier. But then today I wake up to find out that my electricity bill for the quarter had arrived and it seems I have to pay $850 in electricity so that kind of put a damper on things yeah I don't, I don't think you can get a refurbished iPod touch for I think they're all clones aftermarkets aren't they But you have to be careful, Alex. Um, like on the Amscope site, you can buy a trifocal, but it doesn't explicitly mean that it's a simulfocal. They will say trifocal, and then when you're reading the details, they'll either say simulfocal, which is the one that you want, as you know, or they will just simply say trifocal, which means they're going to chop an eyeball out when you switch over. And it accounts for about a fifty, I think fifty to seventy dollar difference in the price. Yeah, sort of the yeah. Just trying to think if I got. I should have a suitable loom somewhere. Gotta be careful though. I don't want to cause a error 26 or error 27 on them. Yeah, it's probably warm enough. Sure. Yep, that's warm.
Yeah, this one looks pretty pristine. It's just missing a button for some reason. Which means something's wrong with it. Bought my eGPU yesterday, the GTX 1060 o'clocked and a Thunderbolt 2 external benchmarking will happen. Very curious to see how that goes, Chris. I've never been a great believer in the external GPU systems as for GPUs, but um, maybe as external processing devices, perhaps. I remember the days when we used to have external transputers, or actually most of the time they were internal cards. And all I could think of were the transputers and that... Oh, we've got a... We've got a... Battery symbol here. And, but I'm only drawing 88, 89 milliamp hour. Well, that's lousy. Though it's probably in the um, it's probably sub three volt on the battery, my guess would be. So it's doing the slow trickle to start. Okay. Chris, you're using a HP? Oh my goodness. <sighs> You just gave me so much more to troll you about. Unbelievable. Using a HP? Where are your sense of... Where's your sense of ethics and morals? I was looking at more gear today and I was kind of... I making a price comparison on a new machine for doing the live video encoding and I'm sort of settling down on the i5 7500 um, because it's got the VA API instruction uh, set in it that FFmpeg can use and it gives me about a two to three times performance enhancement over what I've currently got which is the i5 5200 and of course it's supported in Linux natively. So I was thinking of going for that. Uh, it works out cheaper, funnily enough, than a Ryzen 5 1600 uh, in part because I don't even have to buy a GPU uh, graphics card for the Intel one, whereas with the Ryzen I have to. Uh, oh yeah, we're up to 477. Yeah, you can't see. Yeah. 474, so it's charging. It probably doesn't have a very good battery in it, that's for sure. Bobby, are you talking about when Chris drops the shields just like magic using hot air and he just like holds it there until it all of a sudden goes boop? Chris, I see you managed to get Jason of SDS to start using that technique too, or at least trying it on the uh, odd attempt or two. Your influence is spreading. It's hard to beat the rise in specs for price. Yeah, you, know, you see, that's where I, I was expecting that, but then, like I said, the uh, i5-7500 pretty much they're pretty close and it worked out a hundred bucks cheaper for me to go that way and that's before I even bother trying to get a graphics card so I don't know what the deal is there maybe it's just a local Australian thing okay I need to get this metal plate off because there's water damage on this one and I want to see what it is ah the hot air station just decided to die off Oop, that's got a screw still in it. Can't have that. Chris, I'm loving how our cheap, nasty hot air stations are outlasting the more exotic beasts. 
I should probably be a little more cautious about what I say, <laughs> just in case I get caught out. Interestingly, the historical... Oh, this plate, I didn't even need to use the hot air for this one. Uh, the iPods were the first item that someone compelled me to start doing repairs on. I really didn't want anything to do with it, because I already knew before I got into them that they were basically you know, glue and tape and stuff like that. But this person really persisted. Oh, that's right, I remember they've got a spring in there. Haha. <laughs> ah, memories. So many people losing those goddamn springs. Okay, that one's stuck in there, that's good. Um, but they just kept persisting, and then one day they just sort of bought me this package, and it had like spare screens, the tools, and things like that. And they said, here, just, just try. They said, if you screw it up, that's fine, we don't care. But we just want you to have a go. And so I did. And that was the start of my ride to hell. And people reckon that taking ice or crack is bad. Man, they don't know anything. Wait till they try getting started with fixing Apple products. Yeah, I tried let Bobby says, yes, I tried letting the weight of the board drop the shield. Yeah, I've tried a couple of times, I get a bit nervous. I, I just need to do more practice. I do have a box full of um, iPhone 4s and 5s and stuff like that, so I can put it to use. Uh, to practice, rather. I think half the problem is simply having the confidence. Hey, wow, that sucker booted. I think there's something wrong with the screen, though. You know, this wasn't too bad. I bought a box of screens for the iPod, and they all had faulty polarizers or something because you had to hold them at about 40 odd degrees for you to see the image properly. Whereas normally you should start seeing the image should start becoming polarized, uh, solarized, sorry, at that angle. But that was actually the angle you needed to be able to look at it. And when you look at it directly, it appeared solarized. Never got those replaced. I think that was probably another item on the list of reasons why I should give up doing iPods. And I said, that's it, I've had enough. <laughs> Yeah, if it fails, it's forty dollars for a new element. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's cheap as. Greg M, you got hooked. Yeah, yeah. That damn. I just damn. Got to go out and get my fix. Holy crap! This is full working. Hmm. Yeah. No, it's sitting in the drawer for two years, and it's working. It just needs a button. Who the hell's gonna want an iPod? iOS 6.1, wow. That's amazing. Maybe there's something else wrong with it. Let's have a look and see if Wi Fi. Wi Fi was a thing that commonly died on these, I found. And it seems to be picking up my Wi Fi okay. I think. 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, join. Let's see if it works. Yep, it's got Wi-Fi. There's got to be something wrong here. Other than the fact that I don't have a home button. I repair iPods, but only prior to 5th gen. I don't do 5 and up. Yeah, Bobby, I have had people come asking for the 5th gen. And I was the same. When they first sort of came out, even after a year or so, I couldn't get spare parts from spare screens. So I've never tried them since. And... They just really haven't been as popular as what the you know the fourth gen was. I don't know whether that's because um, 
maybe it was because things like the iPhone 5C came out or people just got richer or the pricing of the iPhone was low enough that they could get it instead but yeah very rarely see an iPod touch 5 so I've just never opened one I have one in my drawer I never cared to open it crack is for sissies flux all the way yeah, Philip, what sort of flux though? Are you going to have Lewis's Amtec flux or are you going to go for Jess's um, Chip Quick flux? What camp do you belong to? There's a line there, you know, you've got to be on one side or the other. I'll be happy if so, you can play GTA 5 on high to ultra 1080p and maintain over 30 frames per second. GTA 5. Is that how you take your rage out, Chris? Playing that game? Going around beating hookers and stuff like that? Shame on you, Chris, shame. Or maybe you're a crack salesperson. Oh, maybe. Maybe you live out your secret life in the Apple Genius Bar. Do they have an Apple Genius Bar in GTA? <laughs> I'm sure someone's made a mod. The only one that works, NC559 V2, yes. The horse tranquilizer filled with, as what Jess would say, what looks like semen. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it, it looks like flux to me. Well, we got on a Friday to 5 after a screen repair while trying to plug in the power switch cost me 200 and said no more. Yeah, that's sorry to hear that, Bobby. Um, I think a lot of us probably have a story similar to that with similar, you yeah, know, different products. Yeah, we, you start out trying and then yeah, something like that happens. It costs you an absolute fortune. And you go, that's it. I don't want to know about it anymore. Okay, this thing's completely blanked. This is obviously straight out of a factory reset. So I'm curious to see how much battery it's going to hold. One of these ones have the battery percentage display usage. Oh, this must be, this is an 8 gig. Yep. About. Completely empty. Hmm. Uh, look. Oh look, I've got panicless logs from 1970. <laughs> oh, maybe somebody can tell me, and I apologise if I'm sounding like an idiot when I ask this, but on the latest, well, the last few iOS's with iPhone, you cannot seem to quickly set the date in the year. Instead, I find you have to spin a million times or hope that you get a mobile connection or a Wi-Fi connection for it to synchronize. Is there a trick for setting the date quickly without relying on um, NTP synchronization? Hey, fine. It looks like I missed a bit of chat here. Finally has a nice lemon. Yeah, it's funny. Everybody has a different sense of uh, what the Amtec flux smells like. Lewis just uploaded a video. Oh, what do you upload? Yeah, let me have a look at see what Lewis has uploaded. And straight away, I'm um, hit with Chris Long's Rice is Food. Still, Lewis. 
What are you doing, Louis? Can this battery power a quadro? Ah, okay. He's trying to find a use for all the stuff that he bought for the um, right to repair Nebraska thing. Alright. So we know we've got one working, even though it's only a 5 gig. This one here is a 32 gig, so that would actually be nice to get working. Let's realize there's this camera hold. So nobody knows how to set the date quickly on the latest iOS's without having to spin for all your life if you're not able to get a um, network sync. Yeah, I used to love it with this little speaker down here. Far too many times I would somehow or another end up splitting it in half. There we go. I'm so glad. It's easy to work on stuff when it's not somebody else's. That's why I do wish I had the financial resources sometimes to just go out and buy something that I want to do work on and then if I blow it up it's like oh well I blew it up yeah. in which case I should probably um, suitably videotape it and then proclaim it's a tech racks or something maybe I'll actually get more advertising and fame that way Come on, what else has to come out? That switch has to come out, doesn't it? Yep. I feel like a complete noob again. I mean, don't get me wrong, I feel like that most days. But given how many of these I used to do, the fact that I'm actually having to sit around and think, it slightly disturbs me. And there's, I swear there's a second screw under here, isn't there? There it is. And I seem to recall tearing these in a if I was having a bad day. Now, there we go. Do you have to remove them? No, you don't pull, you just lift it up, you dumb head. Oops, try to stab myself. Clearly I don't. Ah, uh, now I remember how it tears. The circuit board cat the circuit board when you lift it up catches on the flex and you don't realise until you've taken it too far and then you've turned your already pain in the ass job into a complete colostomy. Or something to that effect. I am wondering though, why am I pulling this out? Can someone remind me? What was wrong with this? Was it the battery that was really shitty? God damn it. I 
Ah, oh, g'day, ZX84. No, well, I wouldn't say it's putting myself down, it's just a case of realising that age has a um, bit of a brutal effect on me, as it does everyone, I guess, in that it makes it very difficult to remember these things, though. If like, at this point, I am trying to recall what was going on here. Yeah, if I can get these to work, I'll give them out to some of the local kids. Yeah, the nice ones. Okay, I shouldn't say just the nice ones, because quite honestly, sometimes the not nice ones are that way for other reasons, but there still has to be a certain level of, you know, a complete jerk type thing. Okay, so you know oh, this one's good now too. I wonder what the hell was going on there. Okay, so that's got 32 gig in it, that one. So I'll we'll stick you up there. I pull the Wi Fi screw and lift the board while holding down the battery flex and lift the board to the left. Yeah. Yeah, the taped on copper tape thing is a pain in the butt and after a while you would get used to the feel of because you know you couldn't really clip it in properly even after you wrapped it up uh, but you'd get used to that it's secured in so you didn't have to pull the whole board out it's definitely one of those you have to do everything blind type jobs Free is already being nice. Yeah. The question is, will it stay free? Will they come back to you a couple of weeks later and say, Hey, mister, this thing's crap. Okay, that one there, good. What's this one? This was the one I think that... Yeah. Okay, this is obviously a very new screen because I don't even... haven't even peeled off that plastic. The number of phones and iPods that I've had in where people have left that to peel off on the... And with the iPhone 4s and 4s's it was particularly disastrous because it did have a tendency to crush, if they did it wrong, uh, it would crush part of the screen and then the people would complain and say, oh, it's not working properly anymore. Holy crap, this one's... Uh, I think this is one of my early experiments and I took the Touch IC off. Now the reason why I believe I did that was because I think it was the iPhone 4S and this used the same Touch IC. And so I probably took it off thinking I could have a shot at transferring it over to a 4 or 4S that uh, was faulty. Um, and I blame Umtelsa from GSM Networks because he had a video of having one of these and manually reballing it using the solder pyramid technique. Anyway, so I got that thing off and I would have been probably 38 or so I guess when that happened and I proceeded to try and do it under a magnifying lamp sort of thing and needs to say that did not work well and so that one just died. Okay. Polar Ap Oh no, no, do not bring in that UK dead magician into my life. I mean, even as a kid growing up, it was a uh, Rowan Atkinson made a joke. And I was at school at the time, and for some reason we were watching this Rowan Atkinson show. And it was something like, there is only one God, or something like that, or whatever. And I said, it is Paul Daniels. And he used to say, everybody just looked in the room at me, and it was like, well, it's not me. Not like I conjured that to be said. I think I was like grade seven or something. All right. Ugh. 
I did my first SMC that way. So lucky it worked. Oh, Philip. Uh, the full 90 hundred ball SMC. That's crazy. Well, congratulations on getting that. Definitely, uh, that's quite an achievement. I'd almost be tempted to give you like a sadomasochist of the year award for that. I do have one of those. Okay, this is now a customer job, which has prompted me to come to this point. Polar Abdul. Oh, Crycho, that's even worse. Polar Abdul. Didn't she do that song with the animated characters or something like that? Uh, okay. Okay, so we've got a 32 gig. Apparently this was purchased second hand. Promised it was all good. I can see already it's got a botched up. Maybe I don't want to do this. The 30 pin connector's botched up. Yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's knackered. <laughs> yeah, let me have a look at another one. No, nope, that's no good. That doesn't even have one on it. Yeah, I can't even show you this because, lo and behold, I don't have my microscope yet. But basically, what's happened, the reason why this perhaps won't be charging is the left hand it's not going to show up but needs to say is my focus on auto? ok we've got auto focus come on yeah, maybe this will work come on light can you do it? yes I can mm -mm -mm. Really, this is like trying to steer the Apollo 13 module back in backwards. Somehow those buggers did it. Oh well, anyway, it looks like a flipping hammerhead shark or something right now. Um, it's snapped off one end of it. And I can see a pin that's been bent back in there. So what this person would want me to be doing is replacing the 30 pin dock connector which any of you who have done this in the past will know is a colossal pain in the ass because you've got heat sensitive parts on one side here and you've got other parts here that are just happy to flow away and it's a pin through connector three rows of that I think it is is it three or two? anyway I have done maybe two of these uh, and they took me about two or three hours to do using wick or hot air both yeah wick and hot air and I do not ever want to do them again so that's it I'm writing that one off Ah, Philip Wright, okay. So you thought of Paul Daniels Magician from the start. Huh. Yeah, it's um I went to register my domain, like pauldaniels.com and this was back in I think it was about ninety six, something like that. And it was already gone. And I was a little dismayed about that. So I went to the site and found that it was Paul Daniels the Europe, uh, UK magician. Needs to say I wasn't too pleased. <laughs> But the bastard is still my de domain name. He's not even a nerd. <sighs> I'm not doing the 30 pins, Chris. Get stuffed. That's 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 almost worse than doing your inverted um, BGA that you did, the TriStar. I don't know why, but I keep calling that thing, or want to keep calling that thing, the Trident chip. 
They're going to be screwed if they ever do produce a Trident chip. Now, l let's try and remove it from this one, since it's botched anyway. Just for the hell of it. I'm not even going to care about any of the chips that are under there. Oh look, I've got an A4 processor. And some Toshiba RAM. Nice. This dud board. So let's do it for the fun of it anyway. I will use my green vice and nearly fall over getting that. Low melt solder makes it easy. Oh no, we can't have that. Can't have it being easy. It wouldn't be so bad if it was yeah, you know, if it wasn't pinned through. So, um, the other thing I remember hating about this is that it's too short in the distance for me to use in the vise. But I do it anyway. I don't know if any of you have ever managed to snap this edge of the board. It's not something you want to do. I personally have never done it, but I have witnessed the sob stories of people who have. And they're like, please bro, how fix? And I was like, can I just use some wires? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, you poor bastard. And then of course hope that nothing ever like, nothing like that ever happens to yourself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can just get a hill, you little speaker. No one wants you. Okay, fixing things. Been a while since I've seen you. Like, what is it, 36 hours now? Gonna have to send a search party out for you. Drag a carton of beer behind a sled or something and wait for you to come out. So, Chris, what's your recommendation for trying to get this bloody horrible thing off? Dig the comments in the video. <laughs> comments are the best. Oh. Should I use Captain Tate? According to some people, Captain Tate is useless. Okay, they don't actually say useless. It'd be more useful if I could... Oh, there it is. I was going to say, it'd be more useful if I can find it. I am not captain taping the electronics, I'm simply captain taping the plastic that is inside the connector. Yeah, this little bit just tore off, but that's perfectly good for what I'm after. Perfect. Yeah, I know Chris. 350, 350? Oh man. And lots of flux. What do I want to use flux for? Flux is the smoke of the devil. Speaking of which, I've noticed in um, one of the hardware store catalogs that came in on Friday that they have a extraction system which is pretty much exactly what I'm looking for, 6 inch. Um, low noise, all that sort of stuff comes with about six foot of um, extraction hose, or yeah, whatever. And yeah, a hundred bucks. Uh, fixing things, you'll know the name of the place, Bunnings. Yeah, they've got it. So it's like the hydroponic ones. The only downside is it doesn't seem to have uh, variable speed. Which is a concern to me. <laughs> oh, what do you mean eggs are bad? Next thing you'll be telling me coffee is bad for me. Well, then I'll be screwed. What is there to live for if not for some sort of... Um, something like coffee?
Yeah, fixing things. I don't know what it was about Masters, but when they came out, straight away I was like, nah, you guys are going to pretty much fall flat on your ass. I think they really didn't know what they were doing. And it sounds dumb, but their colour scheme was also a bad choice. Just Everything just seemed wrong with what they did with Masters. I'm going to say I don't need this nozzle. Coffee will stunt your growth. Oh, that explains why I've stopped growing after 30 years. Yeah, fixing things, I agree. I don't think they had a clue what the hell they were doing. I think they just saw the success of Bunnings and went, we can do it too. And, yeah, well, we've all seen the result of that. And here's something to think about. Uh, yeah, we all have this tendency to wave the hot air back and forth, you know, wiggle it around, and things like that. But really, does it actually do anything? I mean, why should it be any different to just hovering it over there, assuming your expansive airflow is sufficient? Is it just one of those habitual things that we have? I mean, I can understand moving it up and down like this, but I need a, sh I need a lot more airflow, actually. Why, Chris? What's the point? Ah, oh. None of the electronics are going to be conserved, Chris. In fact, the connector probably won't be conserved. I'm just getting a feel for it. Yeah, I mean, I, okay, I understand what you mean by you have to heat everything evenly, like in the BGA and whatnot, but what I'm saying is when the output of the nozzle already covers the entire area, and you're naturally going to have a turbulent action regardless, because the stuff coming out of here is not laminar. I guess I'm just saying is it's more of a habit we have as opposed to a necessity. Like, say you wanted to get this BGA off. Yeah, and you sit here and you do this. Or can you just sit here and do this? Because if you look at some of the extraction videos that come with some hot air stations, they just have it set in a stand, and that's all it does. Anyway, it's just something I was thinking about. Let's just take this off anyway. Oh, look at that, Chris. Just took off the... I'm not actually saying it's wrong or right. I was just more... A bit of a thought experiment. Like, how essential is the process? Mmm. Deep fried, completely destroyed electronics for the sake of it. Here it comes. Look, and we didn't even kill it. I'm kind of disappointed. You want to destroy all the parts of the board equally. Luam, you win the internet points for tonight. That was a beautiful statement to make. <laughs> I like that. 
have to have equal destruction rights. With you. Uh, you're a QFN type chip. I have no point or purpose for any of these chips. I am just more curious. Because this is a completely dead board, and I mean completely dead. That sucker must have underfill. No? What's holding you on? No, you're just another... Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's... Yeah, if you... You're going to see a lot of very destructive videos coming out of me once I get that microscope. Oh, anyone know if you can get um, the spiral, sorry, the metal spiral weave for the um, hose so as to prevent it from kinking up the top? Chris, do you use that at all or can you get it or anything to that effect? Oops, yep, nice one, Paul, you just fucked up that chip. That was a BGA. And it was corroded to hell on the underside. Which doesn't surprise me. Because it was all junked up on the top. <sighs> uh, Philip, um... Ah, uh, well, since I've done with my... Destructo here. I'll have a look for you, Philip. Uh, Chris, I was asking if you can get uh, so like spring spiral bind for the hose, like where it comes in to the handle. So like when you're working at an angle, it doesn't kink. Not that mine's kinking, but I don't want it to become a kinky hose. Alright. Philip, I'm just going to look for that particular item. Mm Oops, wrong one. There we go. Ah, uh, there you go, Philip. That's what it is. Now uh, I'll just bring in the... Well, fixing things, yeah, I mean, maybe it won't kink, but it just sometimes feels like it's getting a bit close to it. Uh, uh, maybe I'm just a bit paranoid. I noticed that things like the JBC and the Weller have it. So I thought it couldn't hurt to copy them. Why not? I was surprised, that connector actually really did come out alright. Trouble is, everything else around it cook cooked. T 
team. Oh, uh, we will mine's team tenma. It's same thing. So anyway, yeah, 102 bucks. Basically, you could use that as is if you didn't mind all the junk piling up on your impeller blades and inside there. You probably could put a filter in there if you wanted. Uh, yeah, stick it outside. I don't know. Oh, fixing things for you. It was nice knowing you. <laughs> All right. Oh, crap. Now you can see my porn. Whoops. Okay. Right here. Alright, so I am going to have to give the bad news to the customer about this one and say so that it's cracked. I really don't want to do a 30 pin replacement on that. It's not worth... Like, they can go and find a working one of those for less money than what it's going to cost me to do that job. And of course I just don't want to do the job, which is a fairly significant factor in that choice. But for these ones, I do have a supposedly new battery. I will charge these up, see how they go, and yeah, if they need a battery I'll swap that out. It's not too hard. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh right, you guys are talking about the hot air stations. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I paid 250 Australian for mine, so that's about 200 US, and I'm definitely very happy with it. I mean, okay, maybe I don't do as much as what Lewis and Jessa does, nor Chris, or probably anyone else at the moment who has a microscope, but that'll happen soon enough. Okay, this has stopped charging for some reason, so I do have a fault in this one. question is what is the fault why would you stop charging you got a dad connector you're crazy fixing things I've got some corrosion in that connector, but it's nowhere near the two pins that matter. So I don't know what's going on there. That was charging there for a bit, unless the... Hmm. Let's put a different battery in there and see what happens. Although, normally if the battery is dead or dying, it shouldn't cause it to stop charging. At least not that I'm aware of. Uh, Miles, mine is a Tenma... Um, oh man, I can't find it at the moment. Hang on. It's in my links, I'm pretty sure. But basically it is the same as what it's the same as what Chris and Jason use. It just has a different faceplate on it. Yeah, let me get the webcam. Uh, okay. Let's see if I can completely rip out everything. Anyway, that's all it is seems to be something rather specific to Australia and UK. Or more correctly, it's uh, limited to the Farnell Newark group. For some reason they've obviously decided to get to get together with this Tenma group. They simply are a rebadging of existing equipment. 
Alright. Well, this is always fun getting these off. Because it is live. Okay. God damn it. I need to change over to a brass. Where's my brass one? Down here. Come up here. We want to use your body, but we don't want to turn you on. That actually sounded really bad. Yeah, fixing things, um, Element 14 used to be Farnell. I'm not sure why they did the marketing change, the name change, but yeah, they did. <laughs> oh, god damn it. I do have some ceramic tip tweezers around here somewhere, but I'm not sure I want to waste them on this particular task. I'm just trying to get this battery off. This is the original one, it's got the scum still on it. Can you find any size of those Sprint and Alibaba? Oh, right, right. I see what you're saying. You're talking about the um, anti kink things. Yeah. I should do some more searching in AliExpress or whatever. Why am I doing this? this damn thing's still connected. God damn it. Alright, now my desk has become a pain in the butt again. I need to get the new benches installed. Everything's too crammed up in here. That said, it is a flaw I have in the way I do things. I tend to get everything clustered up around me until um, everything's a complete disaster and then I go along and clean it all out in one shot. It's not really the best way to do things. Bobby, if you search in my other videos you will find I talk about the hot air station so the proper model number should be in there. As we now proceed to use Chris Long's wick. Oh, look at that, it did a good job. Hey Amy. Uh, Chris, you can't... You can't blame me for uh, the linking problem, not this time. Hey Joshua. So Chris, it won't be long before you've uh, started to pass me in terms of subscriber numbers. I mean, I only just clocked over to 1300 today, and already you're racing up the charts. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're just going to test with this one.
need more work material or it's going to stall? Well, I don't know, Chris. I mean, it's if you've got enough work to keep your doors open, then you've basically got enough work on the stream. Because I think at this point now, it's people participate for the entertainment as opposed to the educational side of things. I mean, it's definitely the case I find with Lewis Rossman. Uh, you know, his first 250 odd videos or whatever he did with all the educational stuff is what drew people in, but at the end of the day we tend to stick around more for his damn good entertainment. Okay, we've got a good battery going on here. Let's see if it charges. And likewise, I mean, I, I'm still learning a lot. I mean, I'm always learning from everybody, but um, with Jessa, Jessa streams, I generally am there to engage in the somewhat more social aspect and then hopefully pick up the odd bit of learning. I mean, there's no denying there's some bloody funny, funny moments that go on there. Okay, it looks like we've got a pretty good condition. What about Wi-Fi? Wi-Fi is good. It's a little weaker, but that's because the antenna is actually not properly connected. I feel like people get bored watching me fix touch IC. No, uh, I mean... It's all the, like I said, it's the entertainment aspect. Every job's different. And I guess when things go wrong, that's when it gets particularly interesting. And then, of course, you've got Micah in the background, drop testing everything, which, uh, yeah, it always adds an element of uh, humour. And, of course, your customers coming in. Let's just have a look, see what has been used in this one. Usage. Okay, it looks like this is someone's. And I've got a I've got pinstripe in there? Oh no, that's actually part of the background. This could be somebody's iPod. Let's have a look. Dear God, please have no porno in here. Nope. Hmm. What's going on here then? Charging is not supported with this accessory. I wonder what's going on there. 143, 65, 12, 10, yeah, okay, something's going wrong there. Zero. Okay, I'm down to zero charge rate. Chris, any um, ideas? Does this thing have the equivalent of a TriStar in it? Because it's it has given up charging and the battery isn't quite full. It's close, but it's not fully full. Uh, I got the charging's not supported with the accessory. This is a genuine Apple cable, by the way. Oops. I'm back to 90... 89, 90... Well, whatever it is, it's intermittent. Uh, I'd be surprised if it needed the right power pack, because... Then again, it is a 30 pin, so it doesn't have the lightning interface on it. I'll plug it straight into... This. shouldn't make any real difference but 
It's interesting though that it complained. It complained only after a while. So whatever's going on here, it seems to be okay for a little bit, then changes its mind, decides no, actually, you can go take a jump. Because now it's charging. I'm ordering a drop test cam for Micah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is the deal with everything being dropped? I mean, is that I mean, apart from it having turned into what he does now, but uh, stress testing? Yeah, fixing things, sure, it works now, but the trouble is... A, I should not have any problems going through this device. Um, it makes absolutely no manipulations between the power brick and the um, output. Other than a... What have we got here? I have put... A 100 milliohm shunt on there, but the cables themselves are probably more than 100 milliohms anyway. I do seem to recall this one coming in as a intermittent fault problem with the charging. And like I said, the connector seems fine. And there you go, see we're back up to 360 350, which is actually quite right for... it's around about 90% charged. I've named Lint the charge port to cause all sorts of charging issues. Yeah, yep, yeah, that certainly can do it. Though this one is clear, that's the problem. Although I could... Sc I'll scrub it out again anyway. It could have a little bit of corrosion um, is it the middle two or the outer two pins on these that does the charging? I can never remember. Yeah, it's, it's original cable. You can tell by the fact that it's ugly. See, it's got the nice little rounded corners and things like that. And the feel of it, it's just like, yep, you're a, you're a genuine, ugly, horrible feeling cable. How do I super chat to Micah for his drop test budget? <laughs> Chris, you're going to have to set up a yeah a Micah fund. Maybe you'll have to be a Patreon. Amy, reflow, yes, reflow CPU, bro. I do like when I get this is. This is definitely one of the polarizer fault, one of the screens with the polarizer issue. Um, I do really like the lightning connector, how it packs in its uh, lint. Uh, here we go, we've got charging accessory issues again. Something's going on down there. But yeah, with the lightning connector, it's a good occasional, cheap, easy fix. Yeah, there you go, fixing things. So that's plugged directly into the power brick and it's not charging. He has two large desks but tries to work on stuff on his lap <laughs> and thus drops. Ah, oh, Chris, sounds like you need some uh, education being done there. How to properly use a So Chris, can you tell me, is there a TriStar on these things or something similar? Or is it a more simplified, brain-dead, so to speak, lithium charger chip? Well, I'm going to turn this thing off anyway. Yeah, 
At least I know the battery works. Yeah, this is a 32 gig one. This is why I want this one to work. Uh, the plug pack I... You see, when I plugged this in initially, like after the first time, it came up, it charged straight away, it didn't give me any grief. And yeah, I mean, okay, it didn't come up with accessory problem. But it just seems overall, regardless of what I use, it is uh, unpredictable. And I have charged so many phones and pods and all that sort of stuff using this particular brick and this cable assembly so I don't think it's that charging is handled by the PMIC on the 30 pin okay what? no tri-star on 30 pins right okay so Michael you got to do something about everybody calling you Michael Butterfly or Michael Dick or whatever sounds like someone needs to be have a bit of Michael Justice delivered onto their heads or something okay well, I'm going to take this battery out because it's clear to me that the existing battery that's in there is actually probably okay a little old but it's still okay Ah, oh, for God's sake, soldering irons off. Yeah, you're probably right fixing things, but um, I mean the other ones that we tried, we didn't have any trouble with this one. It worked just fine. And like I said, from memory, this one did come in with this issue and I certainly was in no position at that time to even remotely look at it so uh, yeah. I can't even look down there I can see there's a couple of chips on there yeah. Oh, come on, don't be an SOB. Come on, come on, get off. Oh, you little. Okay, I'm going to write on this that this battery is okay. Okay. 2017, 06, 18. So then come back to it in two months' time and go, is this any good? And throw it out. And all 120 pounds of Michael Justice. <laughs> Just, man, <coughs> I've been trying to get my own weight back down. Uh, all my life I've never had any troubles whatsoever with maintaining a sensible weight and then the last couple of years something went horribly wrong and yeah, if I do things like look at ice cream I tend to bloat out yeah, it's not pretty Yeah, at first I thought, okay, okay, I'm going to just go up one gene pair size, you know, pick up another inch. I'll put that down to old age. But then that wasn't enough, and I had to pick up another inch, and then another inch. So I went from being a 36 size up to a 40. I was like, sweet Bridget, something's gone horribly wrong. So I'm trying to get that back down. So I think at some point it's just a little bit too far. Uh, I do blame the fact though that I don't have my usual exercise outlet which is to play squash um, which is still no excuse though because I mean yeah it's like okay fine your first preference isn't available doesn't mean you can't still do something but around here that usually means you either have to go do rodeo or um, yeah there isn't really much else to do 
to his vein in a country town. Man, you're not even picking up anything. It's age. Blame the age. Yeah, I don't want to blame the age because then I'll become comfortable in blaming myself, blaming the age for it. Okay, we're back up to 429. Yeah. Something's going screwy with the charging or detection in there. I will defer that until such time that the microscope arrives and I can have a better look at things. It's going to be very interesting when that thing arrives. I dare say there's going to be a lot of stuff that I look at and I'm think, going to think, oh sweet goodness, can't believe I shipped stuff out looking like that. I guess that's what happens. Tacos equal life. <laughs> I weighed 190 once in high school. Now at the moment I'm... Uh, what have we got? 2.2 pound per kilo. I'm sitting on 90, so that's 180 plus another 18, so 198. That's pretty chunky for me. Sounds like a heat thing. Could well be. So I really just don't know. Um, for me, my preferred weight or the weight where I seem to work best is around about 80 kilos, 85. <coughs> Pardon me, so that's about 170, 172. I will tell you one thing, having late nights it is not good, not good. So with that said, I should start cleaning up this workbench. Um, at least I've got two iPods that I think I can use, assuming I can find out what's going on with that. Certainly we've got one that's perfectly good, just a shame it's only an 8 gig, but for somebody that might um, make a significant difference in their lives. So. And we had the joy of pulling stuff off this board for no good reason, other than the fact that it was already dead. Well, hey, at least I've got chips that I can use to... Oh, no, wait, I ripped them off. Oh, well. You do not look that big on camera. Lynn, that's because everything is below the waistline here. Uh, I'm like a... Um, you know those blow up doll things that you can punch and you can't knock them over yeah I, I, I'm a bit like that probably <laughs> it, it does seem to be all around my waist which uh, so basically I'm carrying a spare tire and up top I'm still the old stick man that I always have been oh the freeze spray everybody likes the freeze spray I don't know if we're allowed to have freeze spray yeah, I'm losing my speech now I don't know if we're allowed to have freeze spray up here in the northern tropics. It might be too difficult for those cans to keep it frozen. Don't worry, I'm only joking. I do understand the method in which freeze spray works. I'm just being a bit silly. Yeah, the multimeter can turn on. Oh, not multimeter. Soldering iron. Hot air's off. Power supplies off. I'm almost 150 kilo, and even at six foot, it doesn't spread out very well. No, mm. or ice if you do. Yeah, I suppose the problem with. Oh wait, you're saying ice for cooling things or ice for losing weight? Because both work in both contexts. <laughs> Free spray is too expensive. I do tend to agree. It is very expensive. And the same little at the top, but a track tire in the middle, like <laughs> that, that car. <laughs> that, <laughs> oh, that's bad. Uh, we're still charging 380 here. Yeah, this thing's got something intermittent going on with it. I'm, I'm going to leave it for when the microscope gets here. Yeah, it's going to be very different when that thing gets here. I'll have a lot of projects that everybody can get their teeth into. 
Uh, the other thing, Lin, is I've always been a very lightweight, up top person. My wife affectionately says I've got chicken stick arms, and that is actually quite true. Uh, something cracked, and I don't know what it was. Oh well. Uh, even when I doing a lot of heavy work and things like that, my arms just stay these thin chicken sticks and that's why squash, playing squash was such a good game for me because it suited my physique so I could have strong legs uh, and you know inner torso sort of thing but my arms just didn't need to be that muscular I suspect a lot of it came from as a kid I did a lot of cycling uh, going to school with like 15 kg of books every day up a hill and down a hill both ways and that actually is true I know our parents often would say they would have to walk uphill both ways to things but um, there was a reasonable size hill between where I lived and where my school was and you would have to go up it in the bottom gear of your 10 speed motor, uh, 10 speed push bike speed bike whatever you want to call them so do that every day at least twice a day sometimes a bit more if you had to go back for certain events and uh, yeah you develop a very strong lower section but you still keep your chicken stick arms yeah I'm gonna stay with IPA isopropylene after my little joyous um, detour with a, um, I was going to say acetylene no <laughs> acetylene would be really bad um, with acetone so I'm generally against acetone and then yeah, Chris was talking about its uh, advantages and all that and I thought you know Paul you, know, you should stop being so prejudiced you know, give acetone another shot and of all the phones I happened to pick to use acetone on, it was the one with the uh, polypropylene case, and of course it just bubbled up nicely. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, certainly, I mean, yeah, you're right. IPA, Robert, Roger, IPA does have um, it gets metabolized in your body a certain way it's, I don't think it gets metabolized as formaldehyde that's actually methanol that does that but um, yeah I mean you really don't want it on your skin all the time but then acetone has its own issues I find acetone if it gets on me turns my skin white but we I would prefer to use ethanol if I could, which is drinking alcohol, but it's very expensive if you want to get it without any denaturing agents in it, and the most common way you get it is what we call methylated spirits, I believe it's often referred to as rubbing alcohol or one form of rubbing alcohol over there in the states, but with the methanol in it then you're losing out anyway because you will end up with methanol poisonings to some degree and yeah, the formaldehyde build up um, when I say build up I don't mean chronic build up I just mean short term um, and of course to counter that you have to go and then drink some alcohol uh, ethanol to prevent your body um, processing the methanol before it turns into formaldehyde one of those joyous things so IPA for now is the sort of safest option in terms of health risk versus budget risk. If I could get 99.9% .9 uh, ethanol or you know, as pure as possible without denaturing agents in it then yeah, I mean, I'd be fine if it wasn't so expensive. Yeah, the white skin is actually a tiny layer of desert tissue. Well, yep, <laughs> that's why I don't like it. <laughs> Thank you. IPA was a beer. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if you um, drank that. <laughs> Not the pale owl. I am dead tissue. Oh, come on, Chris, you're not quite a zombie. Not yet. I used to work for a, with a guy in a wafer fab semiconductor plant. He used to pour that stuff on parts and clean them and never wore gloves. Ooh, yeah, acetone and RPA. 
Uh, one thing that was always good though was um, chlorofluorocarbons, but of course while they were great for electronics they were a complete disaster for the ozone layer so I am glad they got rid of them for that aspect but uh, CFCs were extremely useful um, group of chemicals I mean you could basically with CFCs you could take something that was live and running and just dunk it in and wash it and then come out and you'd be fine it just evaporates off uh, there'd be no short circuit risk or, uh, risks or anything like that but like I said killed the ozone layer so good thing they removed it Br Brian's Brian's uh, sounds like you're right yeah you have become dead tissue the brains and okay so that's interesting it boots up and then it tells me that charging accessory is not supported that's funny how about now now you're fine I wonder if it's a dug connection or something it could be an excess bit of resistance somewhere causing the dock sensing to think it's got a different type of connector on it but it could be happening from the inside uh, actually let me scrub this out and see what happens Oh, g'day TCRS. What's the time? Holy crap, 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, I'm overdue for my bed. Very overdue for bed. But it's Sunday, uh, and about the only thing I wake up to is if I find out that Chris, Jessa, or Lewis has got a live stream going, and then I try to participate. And if it's a Lewis stream, I'm usually curious to see what he's yelling at me for today. I see he did something with open board view and uh, promptly, promptly said, oh, I think it was just as he was promoting it. And then his board view disappeared. So I don't know how he does it. He's a talented chap. And I've got a cough. Uh, I can feel that cough's going to come back. All right. I think that's probably dry enough. 519 and behaving. Because there's no guarantee that it actually was a dirty socket. It could have been the scrubbing action moved whatever might be physically um, physically damaged. Who knows? It's kind of like with the iPhone M1 Touch Fix. You know, it was quite difficult to locate that fault, like the actual genuine cause of it, because we had all those people fixing it, or at least thinking they'd fixed it, but it turns out it was only because through the action of uh, the whole chip replacement that it seemed like that, but it wasn't actually really fixing it. Nah, Bubby, I'll clean it when I'm done with this job. Uh, it's... Pfft. It'll get done after the camera's off. On the other hand, Bobby, if you watch the stream next, and it's still there, then you can yell at me. That's it. I think a bit close to three o'clock. I need to um, check out, and I've got to go get a second shower and all that sort of stuff. No way I'm going to get to sleep after all this work. I've got flux fumes over me. I've got isopropylene. I've got all sorts of things. So uh, yeah, if there's one thing I can't stand, it's getting into going trying to sleep without having just had a shower. It just like drives me insane. Unless, of course, I'm out in the bush and I'm doing camping or something like that, in which case it's like a uh, free-for-all. Chris, it's definitely nap time. It's going to be six-hour nap time, I'd say. All right. I'm out of here. Thanks, everyone, for sitting around and listening to me waffle on as I 
try to dismember these iPods. Uh, I'm fairly sure, like I said, we should be able to get this one fixed. Hopefully, it's some sort of mechanical fault, uh, connection or something like that. And I've got at least two others that have a potential chance, and then this customer one's here, which I'm not going to do. If this was my own personal one, I'd probably consider try changing that port over, but because it's the customers, I'm not willing to. So. Oh, I'm glad I'm not the only one TCRS. Thank you. All right. Take care. I'll see you guys later and girls.